looking for magic cards or magic carps, on the new CFB marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Esper Colored Reanimator deck, featuring a couple of cards from Jumpstart Historic Horizons that I haven't had the chance to cover yet. And our deck is pretty straightforward. We've got 10 reanimation effects between our four copies of Priest of the Fell Rites, which is the quickest way to reanimate a creature, a 2 mana 2 2 that can tap, pay 3 life, and sacrifice itself to return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, can only be used at sorcery speed. And then we can also unearth the Priest at 5 mana, in which case it will enter the battlefield from our graveyard with haste, and we have to exile it at the beginning of the next end step, so we get one more shot at potentially reanimating a creature. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Late to Dinner, which returns a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we also get to create a food token to potentially gain some life. And then last but not least, Unburial Rites, which also has Flashback for just 4 mana, so we can potentially cast it out of the graveyard if we happen to mill or discard it, and then otherwise we can cast it for 5 mana to return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So these are the 10 reanimation effects. Now what are we trying to reanimate? We've got some powerful Phyrexians, including two copies of Jingataxius, normally cost 10 mana for a 5-4, saying at the beginning of your end step, draw 7 cards, and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7. So if they cannot remove Jingataxius right away, they'll have to discard their hand each turn. Then we also have one copy of Shieldred, Whispering One, a 6-6 six, six with a Swamp Walk, not an ability we see very often, so it cannot be blocked if the opponent controls the Swamp. And at the beginning of your upkeep, we can return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature, so it can provide a lot of value if it sticks around. Then three copies of Saras Emissary could potentially play the fourth copy as well, as a powerful 7-7 seven, seven Angel with flying. As it enters the battlefield we choose a card type, usually going to name Creature, and we and creatures we control have protection from the chosen card type, so our opponent won't be able to block any of our creatures, and we won't be able to take any damage from opposing creatures attacking us, so that's usually game over against a lot of creature decks in a format. Then we also have a one-off copy of Elish Norn, giving opposing creatures minus two minus two, while pumping our team by two as well. And then a 4-7 with Vigilance. And the reason I'm not playing a second copy of Elish Norn, but instead have one copy of Massacre Worm, is that it's a nice answer to the infinite life combo deck. After the opponent combos with Heliot, Scurry Oak, and a way to gain life, they can make lots of squirrel tokens and essentially gain infinite life. But with Massacre Worm, we can kill all those squirrels and make the opponent lose two life for each squirrel token that dies, which is usually enough to still win the game on the spot. Then taking a look at some other cards in the deck, we've got some interaction early on with four copies of Thoughtseize as a discard spell. We can also Thoughtseize ourselves if we are missing a discard outlet just to put one of those expensive creatures in the graveyard, so that's an interesting play that sometimes comes up. Then we also have the full playset of Stitcher Supplier, a 1-1 that when it enters the battlefield or dies lets us mill three cards, so an excellent way to potentially mill over our various expensive creatures, as well as potential Unburial Rites or Priest of the Fell Rites, which we can still get value from out of the graveyard. And then Bone Shards can potentially sacrifice our Stitcher Supplier as an additional cost to destroy target creature or Planeswalker, but we can also decide to discard a card from our hand instead as an additional cost, in which case this can function as a great discard outlet to discard our expensive creature to then reanimate, or even discard an Unburial Rites to be able to cast it for 4 mana as opposed to 5. And then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Faithful Mending to gain 2 life, draw 2 cards, and then discard 2 cards. So an excellent discard outlet that we can play at instant speed, so slightly better than Faithless Looting, although it does cost more mana. And then we can also flash it back for 3 mana later, so another card we don't really mind milling, as we can still get value from it. And then the instant speed potentially helps us play around Sorcery Speed Graveyard Hate like our own Ashiok Dream Render, which is excellent in the mirror match as it can exile the opponent's graveyard with the minus one, and then also prevents the opponent from searching their library, which can sometimes come up. And then of course we can target ourselves with the minus one, milling four cards into our graveyard while exiling the opponent's graveyard, so it's a one-sided effect. And then our mana base includes our one copy of Phyrexian Tower, as we mentioned. Can also use it to sacrifice our Jingataxius if we're about to draw too many cards, or even sacrifice a Massacre Worm if we need to reanimate it once again for that effect. 
and then the rest of our mana base has a few shock lines with four copies of watery grave two godless shrine and two hallowed fountain one basic swamp in case of field of ruin type effects and then a couple pathways with the blue white times four we've got two of the black white pathway and four of the blue black pathway as well as the full playset of concealed courtyard as a fast land that will come into play untapped if it's one of our first three lands so definitely a focus on black mana early, while still being able to potentially cast a turn to Faithful Mending, so that's why we have so many dual lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, not loving this hand, without white mana, no creature to reanimate. Seems a bit awkward. This is not great, but probably a keep. And then I can get rid of one Stitcher Supplier. So still missing white mana, but a uh, Phyrexian Tower could actually be a nice way to ramp into our Imperial Rites. And then we should be able to find something to reanimate as Jingataxis is already waiting for us. Alright, there's my white mana. Opponent on some sort of Abzan color deck. So not exactly sure what to make of it. Now, interestingly, I could Bone Shards discarding Unburial Rites, killing my own Stitcher Supplier, so I can potentially reanimate next turn already, and I'm kind of liking that idea, actually. So, it's a bit of an all-in play, but I can discard a card as an additional cost, kill my own Supplier, and discard Unburial Rites, and then next turn with the Phyrexian Tower, if the other supplier is still around, we can actually reanimate our Praetor already. And sometimes in Historic it's all about being as fast as possible. Opponent passes. So they could have some instant speed removal available to deal with our Praetor. But uh, so it goes, I guess. I'll attack first. And then Unburial Rites, bring back Jingataxius, and hope this works out. Could have sacrificed the Stitcher Supplier to the Phyrexian Tower first, just to see what I mill. But uh, I think Jingataxius would have been the best creature to reanimate here regardless. And we got to draw 7 cards, so that's great. Now can probably discard at least 1 Unburial Rites, and what else? Maybe even a second. And then I can always discard some of my expensive creatures to Bone Shards if needed. But I also want to keep them in hand in case something bad happens to my graveyard and I just need to hard cast them. So Binding the Old Gods deals with our Praetor, but we can bring it right back if we want to. Until the opponent runs out of answers and they have to discard their hand. So that seems fine. Could also go with the Unburial Rites here. Get to draw seven cards again, and our opponent has seen enough. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one supplier, turn two I can decide whether to play second or go for the faithful mending. And then we can discard an unburial right to cast on turn four. So hopefully don't face too much graveyard hate, and the suppliers can find some good creatures for us to reanimate. And a uh, Jingataxius will certainly do. Facing an elf deck. Alright, so not the best matchup for Jingataxius, we'd rather find like an Elish Norn or one of our angels. So for now, I think still play Supplier since we're kind of short on black mana. And then I can play a tapped Hallowed Fountain. Alright, there's the angel. So if we can reanimate the Angel against an Elf deck, that's usually game. So, just gotta hit my fourth land drop. Alright, never mind, put on some sort of Junt deck, so maybe a Sacrifice deck. So, Angel on creatures, not necessarily game over. But still puts us in a pretty good position. And then I've got Stitcher Supplier to sacrifice to a Priest of the Forgotten Gods if her opponent has that card. 
right, concealed courtyard right on time. So, can attack with both suppliers, play a third, and then faithful mending at instant speed to potentially surprise the opponents. I think hitting an Elish Norn is probably more impactful than the Angel. But uh, both are fine. Massacre Worm could also be good. And there's an Imperial Rites in the graveyard, so our opponent knows that it's coming next turn. Shambling Ghasts doesn't change that. Let's mending. Opponent might be keeping up a deadly dispute, perhaps. Alright, and then Concealed Courtyard can go, plus probably another and Burial Rites. And go for her rights on not hating Jingataxius, just to draw seven. And then next turn we can wipe the board. Worst that can happen to me is like a Bolas of Citadel killing me out of nowhere. Although that's still a reason to play Massacre Worm, because then if the opponent sacrifices any creatures, they lose two life. So I think going for Massacre Worm might be the safest. If her opponent has a deadly dispute, they'll probably want to cast it now. Our opponent could still have a collected company here, thanks to that extra treasure. So I may not want to attack with the Stitcher Suppliers, especially in case of a Priest of Forgotten Gods, then making me sacrifice a worm if they can ambush the one ones. But nothing from our opponent, so do we see a Bolas of Citadel? We do. Now only 12 life to work with, and any creature that dies is going to cost them 2 life. Antique Collector is an interesting one. Opponent's at 5, now they found an Innkeeper, which potentially lets them gain life. But as soon as they find another land on top, they might be stuck. Massacre Worm puts them to 1 briefly. So they don't have a ton of wiggle room. Now they do have couple treasures to combine with Mayhem Devil, but our opponent has to throw in the towel at one life. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Mending can discard the rights plus one of my creatures to then reanimate on turn 4, hopefully. Facing snow-covered plains into an Ornithopter, so an aggressive artifact deck. So Emissary on Creature is probably going to be the decision here. But we can wait and see. Hopefully they cannot kill by turn 4, which is a possibility if they go Steel Overseer into maybe a Tempered Steel on turn 3, or maybe an Alt that Glitters gets involved. Yeah, there's a turn 2 Steel Overseer. So it doesn't look too threatening right now, but that could quickly change. Now we do gain a bit of life off Faithful Mending, one of the advantages over Faithful Looting and the Mardu build. And our opponent does indeed have Tempered Steel, so perfectly predicted the opponent's plays. And then Faithful Mending discards one on Burial Rites and an Emissary, I think. And then hopefully they don't have removal for Emissary. 
And I can also play a Priest of Fell Rites here if I want to. Which can also potentially reanimate next turn. And can also chum block to prevent 3 damage, which is more than the 2 life we gain of mending. So they've got one card left. We're at 6. And yeah, hopefully the angel does it for us. Opponent could have like a conclave tribunal to exile the angel, but I've got to reanimate it and name creature. And then I can hang on to my priest for now. Could also go for late to dinner. Don't think it really matters. So let's see how they deal with the emissary. Priest can attack for two unblocked. Start applying a bit of pressure. Alright, opponents on empty, so... We'll have a few turns to kill them with Emissary. Might as well... Block the Vault Scourge here, because the Emissary itself has protection from creatures. And then... Just a matter of time here... Before opponent throws in the towel. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, just missing a reanimation effect. But we could mill one over with the Stitcher Supplier, and we've got Bone Shards as interaction, which can either sacrifice Supplier or discard one of my author creatures here. And then for now, probably Godless Shrine. Play Supplier. And the Faithful Mending can also be flashed back, so that's another... Exciting turn 3 play. Opponents on what looks like blue-black rogues. So they could certainly have some counter spells at the ready. I think I gotta hang on to bone shards for a different creature though. And in this matchup both the Elishnorn and Shingataxius have their advantages. The opponent milling us also comes with its perks when playing a reanimator deck. So I could Bone Shard skill the Soaring Thought Thief, or I could flash back my Faithful Mending, although there's also a Shield Red we can bring back now. So I don't mind minimizing the damage early here. And then I can discard, let's say, Jingataxius to potentially draw 7. It's also easier to hardcast Elishnorn if we eventually get to 7 somehow. And attack. And now we've got a lot of ways to reanimate our creatures, so we should be able to fight through a couple counter spells. Late to dinner is not bad, but I'll start out with the uh, unbarrel rights that our opponent knows about. And any reason to attack first? I guess if they flash in a Soaring Thought Thief to block, then uh, they cannot counter, so that's fine. But I'm expecting the first of these to get countered, and then... Do I go for Jingataxis or Shieldreds? Both are fine. Of course, they could also have a Drown in the lock to kill one of them, but might as well counter the Unburial right, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go with Jinkataxius here. If I get to draw 7, it's probably good enough to win. Opponent goes digging with the Wind Robber. Goes digging with another. So they don't seem to have an answer in hand. And our opponent concedes. Alright, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Missing a good dual land to let me curve Supplier into Mending, but we can still cast it turn 3 into hopefully turn 4 late to dinner. So I'll try it. And then sequencing my lands. Probably play the blue-black pathway early. And facing Elves, so the 
Stitcher Supplier as an early chum blocker is useful. Now, Shieldred's not the most impactful creature to reanimate, so hopefully we find Massacre Worm, Elishnorn, or Sarah's Emissary along the way. Since those will probably win us the game. So for now, another Supplier. And then next turn I can Faithful Mending, either Flashback or Cast. And try to find land number four. Opponent does have the Elvish Archdruid, so yeah, next turn we could take a lot of damage. Jingataxius. So I probably want to main phase mending. And then I'll leave the black mana open to potentially cast the bone shards if we draw it to kill the Archdruid. That seems worth it. Alright. Courtyard's a little awkward here, but Emissary is certainly the card I want to reanimate if I get the chance, so... Yeah, I mean, I can probably survive next turn with my two chum blockers, but Concealed Courtyard coming into play tapped might be the difference between winning and losing here. So unless they have a Crater Hoof Behemoth, we can chum block to prevent dying to the Elasaur Shepherd's ability. Right, they're just gonna main phase company. So yeah, they shouldn't be able to kill me here, but a Fierce Empath can search up Crater Hoof, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna get another turn here. And I guess her opponent could even cast it now, thanks to all these tokens they found. Wow, well, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, not much we can do here. Opponent had just enough mana to cast the Crater Hoof, and... Uh, yeah, Trample cannot be chum blocked, so... GG's. Turn 4 kill. And we'll never know if uh, we would have drawn the untapped land. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with not the best hand ever. I've got double thought seize to start out, a faithful mending, nothing to reanimate. I think this is a mulligan. This is much better. Still no big creature to reanimate, but supplier and Ashok to find one potentially. And then the question is what to put on the bottom. Could go for Umburial Rites in the hopes of milling another copy with Ashok and Supplier. Or potentially drawing into another copy with the Faithful Mending and then keep the Thoughtseize for interaction. Yeah, I mean, I could discard Rites to the Mending, so maybe I want to get rid of a 1-drop instead. In which case, I maybe keep Thoughtseize and then go Thoughtseize Mending. And then hopefully rely on Ashiok to mill something good. Our opponent on blue-white control. Their hands not particularly threatening, so Lotus Field points towards the uh, Strict Proctor to potentially put it in play without having to sacrifice two lanes. So Fateful Absence is probably the card I care about the most. All right, so the opponents could potentially cast this for two mana. I guess there's no downside to casting this main phase. And then Unburial Rites times two can be discarded. And then I can play an Ashiok. Still need to hit a fourth land drop. And find a creature to reanimate. So... Let's start here. No myself. And there's a Shieldred and an Elishnorn to start out. Opponent does have a Fateful Absence for Ashok. And do they have a way to counter the Lotus Field trigger here? They don't, and our opponent explodes. So maybe their plan was to cast Discontinuity, but maybe they forgot to put a stop. Because if our opponent casts Discontinuity for two mana, they essentially negate their own Lotus Field trigger. So that was their plan all along. But uh, yeah, next turn I would have been able to still reanimate probably Shieldred 
And then if they don't have an answer, we'll start bringing back more and more creatures. So I think we would have been fine, but kind of depends what else they had to work with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems pretty decent. Missing an actual reanimation spell and creature to reanimate, but we do get to mill a lot of cards. And a Faithful Mending to discard them in case we draw them. And then for now... Uh, let's see, probably Godless Shrine, so I can play this on blue to cast turn to Mending. Facing what looks like a Sliver Tribal deck. So if I can reanimate Cesaro's Emissary on Creature, that should be game. And I guess I'll take the one in case I can maybe soak up more damage next turn. Thought sees a draw. Might still be better off casting Faithful Mending. So I can curve into Ashok and then late to dinner to make sure I have something to reanimate. I mean, I don't have to Faithful Mending, could just go Thoughtseize, tap lands into Ashok, into late to dinner. Sure. Bonus got Cloud Shredder and double Dredgescape, so Cloud Shredder giving their team flying is probably scarier than Unearth. Alright, there's a Dredgescape. And I guess they can empty their hand here, unearth the Cloud Shredder to give the team haste, and then play another Dredgescape. So we're at 11, but the Cloud Shredder is gone. And now we can potentially Chum Block again. And then I think Asho gives me the best chance of milling over something good. Happy to chump with the Stitcher Supplier now. Alright, no big creatures yet. Get to mill three more with the Supplier. And if they attack Ashiok, that also buys me more time. So they'll have to send everyone at Ashiok to deal with it. Now I get a chance to chump and smill more. Alright, there's a Saros Emissary, which should be game here. Name creature. And then... Don't know if there's a reason to do anything else. I'll just pass. Could keep milling to maybe find something like uh, Massacre Worm or Elishnorn to really demoralize my opponent. They can take out my Planeswalker, but that's just fine by me. Two attacks with the Emissary will do it. Got my food token to gain more life, as well as a Faithful Mending. Diffusion Sliver for protection. But yeah, Sarah's Emissary is incredibly punishing against these creature tribal decks. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands could use an extra land or two, but seems keepable. Can cast Supplier, Bone Shards for Interaction, which can discard either Elish Norn or Unburial Rites to make it cheaper. And then hopefully turn 4 we can reanimate. Opponents with a Mulligan to 5. So they're looking for some pretty specific cards in their opening hand. Right, Chingataxius ready to be reanimated. 
And our opponent's Jeskai with a strict Proctor. Probably worth killing with Bone Shards in case they're playing Lotus Field. And then... Do I want to sacrifice Stitcher Supplier or discard Burial Rites? Kind of like discard Burial Rites. Since Jingataxia seems like a perfect reanimation target, didn't think I'll need Elishnor. Alright, opponent's got a backup. And the Lotus Field, so they managed to do what their deck is designed to do. So we'll see what they can do with all that mana next turn. But for now, time for Ashiok. Play my Concealed Courtyard before it comes into play tapped. And then I'll keep milling myself, I guess. Not sure if preventing the opponent from searching is relevant in this matchup, but it could be. So can they disrupt my reanimation game plan? Three cards in hand, five mana. They could easily have some counter spells, but luckily double and burial rights gives me a second shot at reanimating. And Asho could mill over more copies plus the Priest of Fell Rites to unearth as well. It's gonna be a Prismari command. Putting Ashok at just one loyalty. discards a couple lanes. So the only counter spell I'm worried about here is a spell pierce. Don't think our opponent's likely to play a Pact of Negation. Does it resolve? It does. Hit for one. And might as well use Ashok on the way out. Right, opponent's got the Stifle to counter that. They probably wanted to counter the Jingataxis trigger instead, but this seems fine by me. Uh, lots of options. Probably don't need all the lands. Alright, opponent has to discard their last Stifle to Jingataxis. And now we can start swinging. Could have discarded Elishnorn last turn, but wanted to keep it just in case of some graveyard hate shenanigans. So now the only concern is losing by drawing too many cards, but we can eventually sacrifice our own Jingataxius, so that shouldn't be an issue. So for now, Priests. And then I could still Faithful Mending. No reason to thought seize. I guess what I could have done is thought seize myself, discard Elishnorn, and then cast a late to dinner. But uh, yeah, this seems good enough. Just pass it back, draw seven. And then now discard some more lands. Got the bone shards. Probably don't need all the thought seizes. Too many cards to discard, sure, Elishnorn can go. Uh, Teferi shows up, not a bad card, but does die to Bone Shards. Let's slow this down. And then next turn, does Elishnorn do it for me? Let's say Bone Shards kill the Proctor, then we would have 6, 7, 8, 14 damage, so that would be enough if our opponent doesn't draw anything relevant off Teferi. And they will have to discard here. Alright, so our opponent's gonna minus instead. That works. You need to slow down. What to discard on burial rights, I guess. Okay. And then probably go for Elishnorn here. Uh, 
and then for good measure I can discard, kill the Proctor, and reanimate Jinkitaxius once again. Alright, so this game seems to be decided, but uh, I guess your opponent could still top deck some sort of sweeper here. Got a discard to hand size again. Don't think I'll be needing Stitcher Supplier. Archmage's Charm to draw two. And our opponent has to discard two right away. We also see the four mana Teferi, which combos nicely with Lotus Field. Alright, so we get to see our Esper Reanimator deck in action, and it's a very straightforward and linear deck. If you face Graveyard Hate, you're gonna be pretty sad, but not too many decks main decking Graveyard Hate and Best of One, so for now it's a well-positioned deck with a very positive win rate. So if you're looking for a quick Reanimator deck, this is definitely a valid approach. Could also go with a Mardu deck instead, but in general the game plan stays the same. You've got Saras Emissary to beat creature decks with the help of Massacre Worm and Tealishnorn, and against the non-creature decks I'm a very big fan of Jingitaxius. Being able to draw 7 usually allows you to reanimate more stuff on the following turn, and if Jingitaxius sticks around the opponent won't have many cards to work with. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.